Hey, it's Dan, and in this video we'll rebuild a carburetor off of his Yamaha TW200. Now one thing I want to point out is we'll be working with a lot of small parts. You don't want to lose anything or get anything dirty or damaged, so make sure that your work surface is clean, open, so that you can easily lay everything out without losing anything. We're going to start by removing the bowl from the bottom. That's held in place by four Phillips or flat blade screws. So when doing this, Make sure that you have a lot of leverage here. You don't want to strip the screws out so it's better really safe than sorry. You want to push in as you unscrew. And I'll use a flat blade screwdriver. So as I remove parts off of this thing, I'm going to keep the old parts and the new parts separate. I've got a piece of paper towel. And with this, the bowl should pop right off. So it's pretty filthy in here. And the inside here is also pretty dirty. The other thing that I've noticed is the adjustment screw still has a plug on it. So more than likely, it's never actually been adjusted. So it's still the factory settings from the year 2000 when this guy was built. So the first thing I'll do is clean out the bowl. I'll start by removing the gasket. I don't care about damaging or ripping it. There's a new one in my rebuild kit. With the gasket off, I'll use some carb cleaner. Next up, I'll get started with the carb. So I'll pull off the little plastic tab off of the main jet. We'll clean that a little bit later. And we're gonna remove that. This is gonna be an eight millimeter box wrench. So we are going to reuse this part. I'll set it aside for now. It's uh, almost fully clogged up. There's another screw right in here, so we'll use a small flat blade. So it looks like the air mixture screw has never actually been removed or adjusted on this bike. Uh, should be able to get a screw in there, through, there's a little pilot hole here, and pull it out. Uh, what I want to do first is enlarge the hole so that I can more easily get like a drywall screw in there. Um, I don't want any of the debris from the drilling to get into the carburetor, so I'll just temporarily put the cover back on there, do the drilling, remove the plug, and then resume. So that was an unexpected detour, but really not a big deal. Small drill bit, a little bit of patience, and the plug popped right out. Next up, I'm gonna spray this down, make sure that there's no drilling debris back off of there, uh, remove the bowl, and then continue. So next up, I'll remove the mixture screw, but before pulling it all the way out, I wanna see what it's set to right now. These guys are special, they're not screwed in all the way, they're screwed in until they're seated and then backed off a few turns to allow for a proper air and fuel mixture. So before removing it, I want to see what the baseline setting was. So use a small flat blade screwdriver and then I'll just count the number of turns and half turns. And this guy was super lean, it was just barely out. They are spring-loaded, so be careful here. Once you get towards the end, you'll feel it pop up. Remove the screw and the spring. 
And next up, I'm gonna remove the float. So there's a little pin that holds this guy in place. I'll probably need to use a hammer and a punch to slide this out and then disassemble the whole thing. And up next, I'm gonna remove the seat and the fuel filter screen that are inside of here. So that's held in place by friction and also this Phillips blade screw. So let's get the screw loose first. And this guy is gonna pull right out. Sometimes they get stuck in there pretty good, especially on the older carburetors. So we may need to get creative as to how to get it out. On another motorcycle, I actually had to drill through the side of it, insert some wire, and then pull it out really hard because I was not able to get it with pliers. So I've got some vice grip pliers here. I want to set them so that they're really tight. Squeeze that in place, and we'll see if we can pull it. Okay. This was probably the easiest one that I've ever done. Usually they're on there much, much tighter. All right, so I've got all the original parts laid out over here. Let's go ahead and open up the kit and see which ones can be replaced. So I've got a new gasket for the top, new float bowl gasket. We'll definitely need to use that one. New filter screen and plunger, new adjustment screw, spring for the adjustment screw, an O-ring, this is probably for the primary, another jet, and a smaller O-ring, and also a handful of screws for the bowl and also for the top. So the first thing I'll do is take this guy apart we use an eight millimeter and a seven millimeter. So we are gonna have to reuse this part. A new one did not come with a kit. I'll go ahead and remove the O-ring. I have a replacement there, so I don't care about ripping it. Let's just get it out of there. And it's uh, clearly in pretty bad shape. So next up, we'll clean this guy. I have some carb cleaner, so what you want to do is just uh, spray it in there. I have a cleaner tool, so this is a really thin gauge. What you want to do is poke it through the little holes here. Make sure that they're clear. It's a good idea to look through all the holes and make sure that there's nothing stuck in there. So this guy looks perfect now. I'll grab the new O-ring, slide it down from the bottom, just because it's a smaller uh, diameter here. And I'll use a hook to loop it around. So try not to stretch this more than you absolutely have to. I'll replace the top of the jet. So this is a new part from the kit. And we'll tighten it back on. Okay, so this is clean and ready to go. Next up, we're gonna clean the car body. Use lots of carb spray, lots of paper towels or shop towels, and really take your time here. The more of that crud you can get out of there, the better the bike is going to run. If you have a straw for your carb cleaner, that's going to be helpful as well. There's a lot of little nooks and crannies where if you insert the straw, spray it in there, it's going to help get the gunk out. So take your time here. 
use some goggles to make sure that you don't spray this stuff in your eyes. So next up, I'll start replacing all the components. I'll start with the fuel screen. I put a little lube on here to make it easier to press back in. Uh, it may take a little bit of pressure to get it on there. So old one came out really easily. There we go. So you want to make sure that you seat it all the way in. Once it's seated, we'll replace the Phillips blade screw that holds it in place. Next up will be the float. So this is the new part from the rebuild kit. So this will slide in place. And we're gonna reuse this pin. Make sure that it's aligned and then tap it in place. You wanna make sure that it moves freely. And this is really the part in the carburetor that lets fuel into the bowl. So that's working as expected. We'll replace the main jet here. So remember I already cleaned this guy out Put a new O-ring on there. This is an eight millimeter. Get it nice and snug. Also make sure the top is snug. We'll replace the other jet. This one does not have a O-ring or a spring in there. and it's not adjustable. So you just screw it in all the way. So get it snug, do not over tighten it. And then finally, we're gonna replace the mixture screw. So this is the new one that came with the kit. It also came with an O-ring, so we'll slide the O-ring on there. Don't do that. There we go. Remove the sleeve. It came with a new spring. And we're gonna screw it in place. So with this guy, what you wanna do is press it in to compress the spring. As you turn it, you'll catch the threads, don't force it. Just easy pressure. And once you've caught the threads, you want to screw it all the way in until you seat it. So once you start feeling resistance, that's it. Don't force it. You will damage the seat. And there goes your carb. And once it's in all the way, what you want to do is back it out. In general, about two to two and a half turns out is what people tend to have success with on these bikes. So that's going to be my starting point. So what I'll do is do half, one, one and a half, two, and two and a half. Start with that and adjust it once I have everything back together. Next up, I'll grab my bowl that's already been cleaned, use the new gasket that came with the kit. It is important to replace this gasket uh, Maybe not every time, but whenever you see that it's flattened out or damaged in any way, you don't want this fuel leaking through here. So this looks good. And then we're gonna slide this guy back on here. As you do this, just be careful that your gasket doesn't move out of the way. 
and I'm gonna use the new screws that came with my rebuild kit. And that's all there is to it. It's really not a hard job. Just be patient, take your time, use a high quality rebuild kit, and you'll be good to go. Thanks so much for watching. I'll see you next time.